Welcome to Games to Look For 2016. We're in the month of February and these are the best games coming in the weeks ahead. First up, Bandai Namco are launching Naratu Shibuden on current gen consoles for the first time when Ultimate Ninja Storm 4 brings with it a fully stocked roster of characters drawn from the popular anime. This fighter will be covering much of the missing final storyline, so who knows where the franchise might go afterwards. <laughs> The sequel to the superb 2012 reboot is almost upon us, but this time instead of fending off an alien invasion, we'll be taking control of the resistance, battling against an occupying force. Baraxis, having learned lessons from the last game, are introducing procedurally generated maps and a variety of other innovations that should make for one of the best strategy games of the year. Yanni is not your conventional platform hero, but he might just be one of the most adorable. The little critter is made of red yarn, and using that yarn he must solve a series of environmental puzzles that takes him on a journey through a selection of interesting and challenging locations. Too big to be standard DLC? Not quite big enough to be its own game, the following is the substantial expansion for Techland's Dying Light. The new content includes a whole new open world to explore, along with new forms of transportation that should sit nicely next to the well established parkour traversal that the base game was built around. Adapted from the heroic Legend of Arslan, Tecmo Kai's collaboration with Omega Force shares the same inspiration as last year's animated series and Hiromu Arakawa's ongoing comic adaptation. The title will have much in common with the Warriors games, so accept busy battlefields and chaotic gameplay. Are you concerned about the Greenwood fire? I wasn't. Sh should I be? Well, the wind is really picking up. Set in the Wyoming wilderness, in the late 80s, where a fire lookout is assigned a tower and begins to discover some mysteries nearby. The narrative-driven game offers players very little interaction with other characters, as the lookout's only connection to the world is his walkie-talkie that he uses to communicate with his supervisor. The beautiful art style and the novel setting makes this an indie game to keep a close eye on. So, last night... You know we shouldn't talk about it. Please, stop. I... <laughs> The sequel to the rather entertaining strategy RPG mashup that features characters from various Bandai Namco, Capcom and Sega franchises looks to add even more diversity and fan service than previously before. Developers Monolith Soft have also managed to convince Nintendo to be part of the game with characters from both the Monolith developed Xenoblade Chronicles and the Fire Emblem series. Would you believe it's been seven years since Street Fighter 4 was released on console, eight years since the arcade version? Updated versions aside, it's about time we're getting a sequel and Capcom have been mixing things up quite a bit as they plan for this to be a continuously updated Street Fighter platform over the course of the generation. The addition of the new 5 gauge and several new fighters like Laura and Rashid has us excited along with very ambitious online content. The Far Cry franchise is making a massive leap back in time, leaving behind guns in favour of melee weapons like axes and clubs, as well as the trusty bow. Crafting and animals will play a more pivotal role than before, it's a bold move by Ubisoft, one that could result in an instant cult classic. We're certainly intrigued and looking forward to seeing more.
The sequel to the highly successful Garden Warfare arrives in February and it seems that the concept is expanded in all areas, building on the solid foundation of the first game. There's certainly more to do for a solo or co-op focused player, while the multiplayer modes and maps are more imaginative than ever before. Also coming this month, the side-scrolling indie action title Cobalt has been in development for quite some time and offers several multiplayer modes, an adventure mode and a map editor. Remember Digimon? They're still around even if they've mainly been active in their native Japan in recent years. This is the fifth game in the Digimon story franchise and it's the first western release in many years. If you missed out on Gravity Rush the first time around on PS Vita, here's your chance to catch up with Kat as she challenges the laws of physics. Fortified combines shooter mechanics with tower defence, putting your hero up against the 1950s themed Martian invasion along with up to three friends. French developers Microids are adapting Agatha Christie's classic Hercule Poirot novel into a video game that's heading to PC, PS4 and Xbox One this month. If Ultimate Ninja Storm 4 isn't enough to satisfy your Naruto needs in February then Bandai Namco are also bringing out this compilation with the first three games in the series coming to PlayStation 3. Artful horror title Layers of Fear is coming out of early access on PC this month as well as hitting PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Dealing with mental health issues puts the Town of Light in relatively uncharted waters when it releases at the end of February. Square Enix are finally releasing the handheld RPG sequel Bravely Second End Layer in the West on 3DS this month. We're not going to know the exact date until just before it launches, but the next release in Telltale's episodic series, The Walking Dead, is coming this month. That's all we've got time for. We'll see you next month.